filters. And there's just an easy way to do some various stuff that I'll show you on there. And then we'll talk about this troubleshooting filters. So if I go to the filters tab, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller. If I go to the filters tab, we'll look at some of the functions that are available. <clears throat> I can actually filter to only see traffic from intranet or internet, or I can say I only want to see stuff from a certain host. So I could go type in here, you know, I only want to see bing.com or whatever. So it's a way to limit, uh, if you've done this before, when you turn Fiddler on, you're going to see lots of traffic. There are a lot of things on your computer talking in the background that you don't even know are making requests out to other places. And sometimes it's hard then to troubleshoot because you have all that additional stuff. I can also come in and say, I only want to see traffic from a specific process. So if I knew that I had MS Edge here, you can see I've got a couple instances of Edge. If I said, I only want to see traffic from this specific process, I could do that. A couple other things that are cool. So, so far we've been talking about tracing, uh, you know, Fiddler, DevTools has caught up to um, being able to view stuff. You can go see the requests in DevTools. Fiddler is going to let me do a lot more things because it's sitting between the browser and the server. Again, it can actually modify things on the fly. So I'm just gonna clear this up a little. We talked about compression earlier. And so what I'm gonna do, if you've seen compression before, what it does, I'm gonna just re-request this again. We come in here, we look at this bootstrap.min. So by default, when it makes a request, the browser will tell the server that it understands compression. So if I look up here, one of these headers is called accept encoding. What I just told it to do in Fiddler, normally it would say accept encoding, gzip and deflate and all these other things. I basically told Fiddler that I don't want that to happen. Instead, I want you to delete that request header. So now what I've done is even though the browser wanted to send and say it could handle compressions, I'll show it again here. I'll take that off and we'll just rerun that request. When it's not there, <clears throat> if we look at things like Bootstrap, not compressed, it's 160K. Compressed, it's about 37K. So again, when I turn this on, I'm saying, hey, Fiddler, you're sitting between browser and server. Please just pull off that request header because I want to see what the server or the client might do differently if I modify that request. So that's kind of a nice feature. I can set request headers if I want to. I'm gonna show you breakpoints in a little while, so I'll skip that part for now. Um, I can hide authentication demands. So if you do a lot of work where you see 401s and that kind of stuff, if you don't wanna see any of these specific statuses, you can just ask them to hide it. You can also do a time heat map. So it's hard coded in the Fiddler. I think if it's less than 50 milliseconds, it'll be green. It just color codes each one of these requests based on whether it considered it to be a fast response all the way down to a slow, it would be a red response. Another cool thing is you can block files. So if I wanna see what would happen if I did, if I blocked my CSS files and went back to this and did a control F5, not terribly surprising, right? It looks really bad because none of my styles were applied. Another performance tweak that people do these days is they do what's called inlining critical CSS. So they split their CSS so that it shows specifically just what's above the fold. So if I did it again, they'd get the minimum amount of styles in a style sheet to be able to look so that this up here is at least decent looking. They then inline that, they put it directly into the actual HTML response because your browser then does not have to wait to download a CSS file before it can start to show things. It's a, it's a good performance technique. If I wanna see if I did it right, that's where Fiddler is interesting. I can come in there again and say, I want to block CSS files. If I did my inlining correctly, I should see a basic, you know, the basic styles to show this should still be there if I did my critical correctly. So it's just an example of a practical use of why I might want to do that. I can also do down here, the response headers. I can actually flag um, responses with certain headers. I can delete response headers. If I want to mark some of these that have cookies, I can do that. So if you're GDPR and you need to make sure that all the vendors on your site, you need to know which ones set cookies, I can just turn that on and request again, and it'll put 
all of these individual sessions that set a cookie will be in italics. So it's a quick way for me to spot check who is all setting cookies on my site. Again, if you're on a realistic site, you've got third party vendors and stuff, you wanna know that you know who you use and if they set cookies or not. So that's kind of helpful. That's filters. Uh, there's a lot more power we're gonna get into. These are just quick headers to do some of the basic things that you might want to do. The last thing noted on here, um, Eric used to get calls quite a bit where people would say, I was tracing traffic and now I don't see any traffic anymore. And the problem was because they were filtering things out and they forgot they were filtering. So he added this troubleshoot. What it will do is it'll show everything that was hidden, but have a strike through for it. So he said that really cut down the calls of people talking to him because they realized that it's their filters they set up that are not allowing them to see some stuff. So that's what that is there for.